Hi guys, thanks for this episode of the Nick Egan Times. On this episode, we have an incredible guest. We have international model, Australian icon, fashion designer, author, and photographer, Robin Lawley. Robin has modeled for Ellie, Marie Claire, Cosmopolitan, Vogue, and Sports Illustrated, to name a few. Welcome to my fellow Australian, Robin, and thank you for coming on my podcast. Thanks for having me, Nick. That was quite uh, welcoming. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. It's Sunday night in New York. <laughs> Nick luckily got me because I almost was going to go to bed soon. <laughs> so, yeah, riveting times. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, tell me, how's it all been going over there? Yeah, it's good. You know, like I was just saying, COVID, I feel like it's finally kind of ending, even though I know COVID's still out, so I shouldn't really say that. But people are starting not to wear the masks and like my daughter doesn't have to wear a mask at school now. So, and I just traveled recently for work again. Like I feel like I didn't travel for so many years. So it was really weird for a model not to leave. Um, but I've enjoyed it too. I've, I luckily live in the woods. So I've been gardening and playing with my daughter and I had to become a teacher as well. You know, that was <laughs> during COVID times, like many parents, I don't know if you've got kids, Nick, but yeah, teaching was a new, you know, venture for me. But wow. yeah, going good. Awesome. How, how has the um, pandemic affected you personally and professionally? Uh, I think I got to do my podcast, Everybody, which was really an amazing experience. And I got to interview some really incredible people. And so I was happy that it, I feel like, you know, even though I was sitting still, I got to do something. And, you know, I learned how to grow mushrooms, which was another really cool thing to learn. And it's really complicated if everyone's like, whatever, lady. I was like, mushrooms are not that easy to grow. And, you know, they take a lot of time. And so I grew like loads of different types. And so, yeah, I think it's what you take from it. You can either make the COVID experience kind of like, you know, your bad experience or you can try to grow from it. So I just was trying to grow from the experience. And I did get COVID too. Um, but I didn't even know it. I was trying to come home and write, had my suitcase with me going to the airport style and then got my results and was like, what? And then I had to quarantine. So I was completely, you know, it was a unique experience. But, yeah, I could but, imagine. Yeah. How is it for you? Yeah, it's good. I'm very similar to you. So when COVID hit um, and we obviously had the lockdown, especially I live on the Northern beaches. So we had our yeah. own like two and a half lockdown excluded from the rest of Sydney around the Christmas time to a year and a half ago. Um, so yeah, I started the, my podcast too. And obviously this is where we're at now. So I was very, I guess, I'm similar to you. I didn't want to just waste my time and just, yeah, got into it. Nice. Good job. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's just jump straight into it. Take us back. Tell me about growing up, um, your family um, and yeah, everything relating to that. Yeah, I mean, I just grew up in Western Sydney's Australia, like no West that special. Um, <laughs> uh, it was a little <laughs> rough where I was, but it was a good experience. I had, you know, a big family, um, a lot of siblings, and I'm the youngest. Uh, and I got into modeling because my older sister wanted to model. And so we were just aware of it and we watched a lot of fashion TV and, and my auntie was a model. She, my auntie was is so beautiful and was a fashion designer so I used to look up to her a lot and then I kind of because I didn't fall into it I really actually tried a lot and they all just denied me because I was too tall and too curvy so I kind of forgot about it and then went traveling again into Europe and lived in Europe for a while and then came back and then kind of fell into it again and in Chelsea somehow we connected um, and then she signed me on the spot and, it, and I've been with Chelsea at Bella Management ever since. So it was, you know, I think I was like 18 at the time <laughs> and yeah. yeah, got to go to New York, signed to New York agency. It was like, you know, from a little girl from Western Sydney, Australia to like New York and all these New York agents. It was such a crazy experience and yeah, signed with Wilhelmina and, um, but the first year of living in New York City for any model is such a unique experience. I got shoved into a model's apartment with eight other girl <laughs> girls. Oh. It's like its own reality show. And um, it was regular models, though. So a lot of the time, it was just me, the one that eating in the <laughs> apartment. But, um, no, I made really good friends. And it was really fun. New York is 
New York. It's very, it's unique experience. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and tell me about the, I guess, it's an incredible journey. I guess when you were doing the shoots and obviously really starting to take off and, you know, you're really getting a lot of exposure, especially internationally, what was that experience like um, and how did that feel, especially being young at the time as well? Yeah, no, it started to feel really exciting. I was following a model, Crystal Wren, at the time. She was a really, she had done, I think, Vogue, or she had done a lot of stuff that no other curvy girl had ever done. Like, we had never seen a curve in the magazine or a TV or anything, anything near my size. And I look back on that and I think, wow, it's so crazy. Like, no curves, like nothing, nothing. No way. Models were half my size. So... Uh, I looked up to Crystal Wren and would look up after her like agency and things like that but um, yeah no it's been interesting ride because we've been trying to break the like usual way that they do things like designers they would make so much fun of you and you just had to like move on and act really confident and be like why don't you have this size for me you know it's i'm average size why, well i'm really tall but i'm still like curvy so where's you know i i want to buy this and you're not like allowing me and it's just like discriminate like discriminatory so anyway um i liked eventually you know we got through to them in that sense because we would just ramble like <laughs> other shoots and we would just come into it and declare that we were a part of it and now it's starting to change now I see curves much more in the runways um, but they're still not really there like we're still really pushing for diversity on the runways yeah that's, that's great insights um what has been some of the best shoots um and I guess covers that have stood out for you in your career that really you go wow that was amazing um, for me, I love doing, I remember French L years ago, it was such a beautiful cover and it was the first time that I was really treated like a regular model, not like a curve model and given like that, you know, kind of roll back eye, it was, they wanted to create just an epic fashion shoot so I could do all the fashion shot moves and it looked just so beautiful and so that was one of my first big covers and big editorials so I love doing that and then you know Vogue Italia was such a change in the industry to get all those heavyweights like you know they all have like 20 assistants <laughs> it's like such a unique experience being on a Vogue Italia set but it was beautiful and I was with some friends and you know Sports Illustrated they're amazing and they support your career and you get to travel with them and party with them and meet the fans so it's been fun. I think I've done it like four times or four or five times now. So it's, you know, I love the traveling too. You know, I love traveling. So it's just been able, I've been able to go to all around the world. So I know how lucky I am. So I'm really grateful to have this job. Incredible. Where's, where's some of your favorite places you've traveled to? Um, I find Italy. I love traveling to Italy because they have so many unique shoot locations and, you know, I've been to Hawaii. I love going to Hawaii. I love the islands. I love down south, South America too. Um, I love the people down in South America, in Mexico. Um, but yeah, I find it, I love, I just love traveling. So I've got to really visit a lot of amazing places. I love Amsterdam. I love Holland. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, got to open my eyes and I got to see a lot of places. <laughs> Lake Cuomo, we've shot it. I've shot at Lake Cuomo, like I think four or five times. That's a really popular destination. And that's in Italy and that's beautiful. So it's, yeah, if you like traveling, it's a good job for that. Wow, that's tremendous. Um, but tell me, you do, you've done a bit of photography. Tell me about that. Yeah, I like, you know, shooting uh, some of my friends and, you know, you, you need shots as a model all the time. Like you need new shots. To, for your book and you just need to keep up the social demand and um I needed shots for my swimmer campaign too and I don't know I would look at the photographer what they're doing and I'm like you know I'm just learning by experience and picking up stuff so I got a few cameras I, ha I have a few cameras now <laughs> and I got a set and I was doing food photography as well so it kind of just like my friend was like, I need new shots of this and that and that and I was like I, I can take it I've got all the gear <laughs> and so I kind of fell in it that way and then I realized I kind of like videography better 
So I've been doing more of that. And SI, I got to work with S Sports Illustrated for that and some models for that and got to shoot my own campaign and my friend's campaign. And it's just been something I like to feel like I'm learning, you know, as a maybe potential future career or, you know, we'll see. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. You did Ralph Lauren. Tell me about that and um, the moving billboard. And that's, that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, Ralph Lauren's such a great company and they're really trying to use diversity, um, you know, and all companies should take notice and do the kind of the same thing. And the team of Ralph Lauren is so lovely and the photographers are so lovely. And it's, you know, it's funny because I have Robin Lawley is RL, <laughs> Ralph Lauren is RL. So I yeah. feel like it was meant to be in some weird sense. Um but yeah, they're amazing and I've loved the opportunity. I'm so glad that they, they use Curves now, which is amazing. Yeah, that's sensation. Um, and tell me, you're a proud vegan. Tell me about that and how that's changed your life. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I was a vegan as a teenager, ironically, for years. And I was a vegan as a teenager for animals. And then I kind of just lost my way and got sick of it, got sick of my friends, you know, telling me to change and... So I went back to eating meat and dairy and wrote a cookbook, you know, about the whole, you know, I was eating anything I wanted and I was like, I can eat this and that, and anything I want in moderation, I'm fine. And then I got really sick. And after my daughter was born, I had a stroke. So uh, I had found out what, while I had the stroke that I had lupus, which was a autoimmune problem. So it was like a crash of events. So I was, I think three weeks from de delivering my daughter and then suddenly I'm in hospital. Um, I got taken to Australian hospital from America and it was all very dramatic. I lost the feeling completely of my left side and autoimmune conditions. I think you hear them and then you just blow them off. But I, like I said, I found out I had lupus and APS in mid stroke. So um I had to learn to live with a new found illness and learn to move and talk again on the side. And then a few years later, I started opening up about my lupus and a doctor contacted me and told me she could put my lupus into remission. And I was like, sure, go ahead. Like, I, cause I can't go into the sun and I'm, mod I'm modeling. <laughs> um, and she did, and it took a lot of work, but she's a vegan. She doesn't eat any inflammatory food and she's very healthy. Her name is Dr. Brooke Goldner and her hashtag is goodbye lupus. And literally I was drinking 12 cups of spinach a day and one full cup of omega-3, so flax seeds or chia seeds. And I had that every single day and I put my lupus into remission. And so it works. And it's not easy thing to do. You know, it's something if you had cancer, I would recommend to do. You know what I mean? Like if you had an autoimmune condition, do it. If you have cancer, do it. Like give yourself the chance to get better. And even today, I still drink two ginormous smoothies every day. I do not miss it. And it is instead of taking a huge amount of drugs or chemotherapy, I drink smoothies. Wow, that's great insights. And that's definitely something that would have changed your life. What, um, what was that experience? Because that's quite um, scary getting a stroke, obviously, uh, being a young age too. Um, yeah, like, I guess mentally, how did that affect you as well? Like, what, what really, that would have changed your perspective, I'm assuming. Yeah, just slightly. It changed, <laughs> I think it changed everything for your outlook. And it's one of those things where, you know, while it was happening, I thought I was just going crazy. You know, I thought it was postpartum. I think everyone around me thought it was postpartum. The first hospital I went to in USA turned me away. And so I went home, <laughs> like not being able to move half my face. And I was just not coherent anymore. And to be sent away from a hospital was like, it was so bizarre. Um, it was my manager that came over Chelsea and she took one look at me and she's like, she needs to go to hospital like now. And they took me home. It took me straight to the ER in, in Sydney. And then they, you know, gave me a CAT scan and they were like, yeah, she's had two, not just one, but two strokes. So it was a series of unfortunate events, you know? And I think when you're young, a lot of the time people aren't diagnosed when they have a stroke you know it, and I think when you hear stroke you think of old person you're like what the hell so 
it's the reason why I'm more inclined to talk about it now because it took many years it's been seven years and it's not been an easy thing for me to talk about because it's sometimes it's embarrassing because people do not know anything about a stroke so they just hear it and they're like whatever that's you're too young and but unfortunately the only thing I can't fix from the stroke is my epilepsy and that's one thing you do it's like you get damage from a stroke unfortunately and my damage was epilepsy so it's a new condition that I live with but you know I've still got hopes just like lupus I put into remission that one day they hopefully will be able to put epilepsy into remission but I manage that um through drugs unfortunately but that's the way I have to do it at this day and age yeah thank you for sharing that too yeah I know it wouldn't be easy so yeah I appreciate that um all right let's change um tell me about your fashion design and um the swimwear I believe that you created and helped yeah I mean I love doing swimwear designing it was <clears throat> amazing experience because swimwear is like one of those things that for some reason for women it just always does not fit well and you know as a just as a model I would put on so many pieces and be like man this doesn't fit my hips right this is so boring or it's ugly or this is no cup there's no like and so I was like it's so easy to design something cool I don't know why these people aren't going up in sizes or thinking about a woman's body and we created Robin Lolly Swimwear a few years ago and it sold out. It was amazing. It was cool, like just cool swimsuits and they fitted you and you didn't have to worry. And I think I still have all my suits and from many different collections and they last, they're good quality. That was my big thing. I wanted good quality and double lining and I wanted them to be able to last because I used to be a swimmer. So swimming was my life. So um it was amazing experience and we, we think we did like five seasons it's still selling now in some shops but we me my the person i was doing with parted ways so I, i'm trying to still figure out if i want to do it another season or um if i do something else so i'm try, just trying to see yeah, cool um what are the current projects and i guess the future projects you're working on too what does the future look like um, for me, like it's coming out of the pandemic time, <laughs> times, I still, you know, I enjoy working in New York and I still enjoy traveling, but I've been doing a lot of art works of late, like just trying to, I feel like get through emotional stuff and art helps me a lot. So I'm doing a lot of art these days and for future, like I said, I might go into a bit more uh, vegan cooking um, that's something I do a lot of because just to promote it because I believe that our you know earth is unfortunately very <laughs> malnourished right now and needs a lot of help and it's the easiest thing you can do to help earth right now is go vegan so I'm trying to push that a lot and yeah I'm really loving life and really grateful to be here and I know I nearly died so, <laughs> so like I said I'm, I'm very grateful to be here and I'm yeah I'm very happy and I think I, I live a very blessed life and a lot of people don't so I want to change that for them too yeah awesome what motivates Robin David um my daughter definitely and trees I love you know I sound like an old lady probably but I love seeing trees in mother nature every day she motivates me and my partner he's amazing I love my man he's such a sweetheart and so yeah that's what motivates me daily and what's in your career, obviously you would have met a lot of people. Um, what's the best advice you've received? Um, I've received a lot of advice. Uh, I love it. I think, you know, some people, it's more just like being honest with who you are, kind of like cliche advice. But, um, and I think my agent, she's always picked me up when I fall a lot. So she tries to build me up and I think just owning who you are is a really good advice. I know that's cliche, but just accepting yourself and accepting your body size. Um, and, you know, I think that can really help you and you can change your ways because not everyone was meant to be a stick. You know, I hate this cliche fashion world of everyone's meant to be skinny. It's not true. And I, you know, everyone has bone <laughs> sizes that are different. So I think letting go of that kind of, uh need and guilt like just let go of it and enjoy your body now for what it is yeah that's great advice and for the younger generation especially the younger models that are obviously you know you inspire and they want to come through i guess 
to be at your level, um, what would you say to them? You're very sweet. Um, my first advice would be take care of your health. You know, your health is number one. And the fashion world can be very fleeting and they don't give a shit about you sometimes, you know, and they can drop you in an instant. And I remember seeing at the models apartment, girls come in and girls come out and they would be broken and they wouldn't have succeeded and they would be in a lot of debt. So Model Alliance, um, my friend Sarah Ziff has written a lot about it and she helps a lot of girls because it looks so glamorous on the outside and it looks so, you know, this and that. And you think the models are earning a fortune, but they're really young. They're like 14 and 15 sometimes and they have no idea what they're doing and they get sent to New York City, you know, and everyone's like, I'll take care of this. I'll take care of this. I'll take care of this. Oh, wait, here's the bill you know, at the end. And it's like, it's not a small bill. It's usually tens of thousands of dollars. And then they take it from the kids work and then they've left with nothing. And I would see that every day with the models. So it's, you have to kind of be smart and come into it knowing that it's a tough industry. And like I said, your health is the most important. So if you're feeling stressed out, you're feeling tired, you know, you know, your health is really the most important and eat, you don't have to be skinny. Yeah, for sure. That's really, that's really great advice. And if you were 18 again and you could do anything differently or you could change anything, is there anything you would change and what would that be? Um, I actually thought about this today because I was feeling, I had like, you know, just a moment to myself and it would definitely be, I wish I kind of stayed vegan as a teenager. Like I felt like I, <clears throat> I was on the right path. You know, I'd researched a lot about the factory farming and just a lot of, about farming in general and the milk practices, dairy industry and all of it. And I'd felt I was on the right journey. And like I said, I just gave it all up and went back into meat mm -hmm. <laughs> and cheese and everything. Very hardcore. And, and like I said, I got really sick. And so for me, that was, that is my regret, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, it's also led me to meet a lot of people and garden. And now I live in the woods. So I think it did lead to another journey. So you've got to try to take the bad with the good. Um, but I feel like I'm in the right place now. And I think people can make the change. People can care about their health. Yeah, awesome. Um, Robin, thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, giving up your time. Thank I you. appreciate it. <laughs> um, no, that's all right. Um, yeah, I love I love seeing what you're doing, you know, this amazing trajectory in life and especially obviously what you've alluded to with everything's happening. It's amazing. It's incredible. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. I wanna I'm gonna have to check out some of these other interviews you've done. Yeah, for sure. You're gonna have to um listen to them. I'll send them to you. <laughs> yes, please. I love podcasts. Bye -bye.